going to discuss how to do linear and quadratic approximations numerically with Python. So <clears throat> let's restart the kernel and clear everything up. So first we're going to load some packages and then let's talk about the key part here. So a numerical derivative is the way that we uh, do derivatives when our functions aren't analytically available or we don't just don't bother to do the analytic derivatives. As you may recall from back in high school, the analytic derivative is the limit of the Newton quotient, which is the change in uh, f divided by the change in x. Now, uh, numerically, we can't do this because we can't actually find these limits. Um, so what we do instead is that we just replace, give up on the equality and we say we're going to find some h which is small enough. And it turns out that um, an h on the order of 10 to the minus 8 will uh, start to give us what's called round off error. So if we go, if we take steps that are smaller than that, it becomes difficult to uh, precisely evaluate the difference with enough numerical precision to be able to compute this this difference and in particular to do the um, the division operation afterwards. So in practice there's an optimal choice of h which is on the order of 10 to the minus 8. And when we implement this practically it tends to be uh, advisable to use relative steps so that is Instead of just taking an absolute step size of h, we take a relative step of h times x. This means that if x is a very large number, if it's uh, on the order of millions, then we'll be taking um, a step size of 10 to the minus 8 relative to the millions. So uh, 10 to the minus 2, I think. <clears throat> and again, we're dividing by the distance that we're taking in x. Okay. So let's see how this plays out uh, numerically. We're going to define a function which takes three inputs. It takes a function handle, which it's going to expect to be uh, a function, a point at which to evaluate the derivative, and a step size. Here it's um, 1.49 times 10 to the minus 8, which is, you can show that that's a, 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 a good choice uh, for certain pretty functions. All right, then we find out first what is our forward step. And the first thing to note is that we check whether x is zero or not. And that's of course because if x is zero, then h times x will evaluate to zero as well. And so this will be exactly the same as this and we'll be dividing by zero. So that doesn't work. But if x isn't zero, then we do take this uh, forward step of x times one plus h. So a relative step of 10 to the minus 8. And, but if x is 0, then we need to take an absolute step. So we just take a step forward of h. All right. Um, and so because we have this check here, we need to compute the step size, which is going to be x times h if we're up here, or just h if we're down here. And then we can compute our gradient, which is just the um, the difference in the function evaluated at x1 and x0 divided by the step size that we took, and that's what we return. Okay, so now we've defined d, and we're now ready to start evaluating it. So let's um, let's do an experiment with a an actual function. So let's think about um, a specific function, and let's oops, this is wrong. Let's do x squared minus x. So x squared minus x, that's our function, and we define it as a, an anonymous function using the keyword lambda. So lambda tells Python that after lambda, you're going to see whatever the inputs to the function is, and then after a colon is going to come the expression for the function. So it's shorthand. An alternative way of writing this would be um, like this. That does exactly the same thing as doing it in the bottom way. But inline functions or anonymous functions or lambda functions are a little bit more convenient to work with. And for this function, we can do the 
and derivative analytically <coughs> because it's pretty simple. It's just 2 goes in front, so 2x minus and x der derivative is 1. All right, so now we can take our analytic derivative and compare it to the actual derivative of the function f at the uh, evaluated at the point x, which is 1.0. And we can see that our answer is getting very, very close. It's not exactly equal to the true number because this is a numerical derivative. And we can try changing the step size here um, and, uh, and seeing if it, it makes a, a difference or not. And we can see that once our step size starts to get really large, then we get way off on the gradient. But uh, for small step sizes, we're pretty close. All right, and then let's plot uh, the function. So we're just creating a set of points from point 0.2 to 2, 100 of them. And I want to plot on the x-axis this, this grid, and I want to evaluate the f function on the grid and plot it so that we can look at what the function is. Good old friend, a second degree polynomial, happy and smiley and everything. All right, let's move on to the second derivative. As you may recall, the second derivative is simply the derivative of the first derivative. Analytically, it's equal to 2 everywhere. So that makes it pretty simple here. Um, but let's see how we code it up. It's a function that takes a function handle as the input and a point at which to evaluate it. And then we have two different step sizes, one for the outer and one for the inner uh, derivative. And the first thing it does is it define this function defines inside of it a local uh, function handle called df, which is the derivative of f at x taking a step size equal to h inner. And then finally, we take the derivative of this function at the point x naught and taking a step side of size of each outer. So let's see what that how that plays out. And voila, it gives us um, <clears throat> an analytic second derivative of 1.99. And we can try to play around with the step size here and see, let's see, see if we take a bigger step on the outside uh, and an even smaller step on the inside. Um, and we can see that once we start to take stupid step sizes in any of the two, um, we'll go and get in trouble. Oops. Good. So that's our second, our numerical second derivative calculator. Um, it simply takes, um, creates a function handle which takes a single variable as the input x and returns the derivative of the function f at x and then it takes the derivative of that function. So it's the derivative of the first derivative and that's the second derivative. So that makes a lot of sense. And now we're ready to do um, some quadratic approximations and linear approximations. Okay, so <clears throat> you may recall from uh, the analysis of Taylor polynomials that an approximation function for uh, f in the neighborhood of some point x naught is that you take f and evaluate it at x naught and then take the derivative at x naught and multiply it with the difference between x and x naught. That's an appro a linear approximation of f at the point x and it, it works well when we're close to x naught. Similarly, if we step, expand this and add a quadratic term here, the next term from the Taylor polynomial and then we're adding half of the second derivative times the, uh, the difference squared. So let's code these things up. The linear approximation FL takes x and the function handle and the point at which uh, we are the point at which the point x naught and then a step size. Okay, so first we compute the function value, f naught. Then we compute the 
gradient value and we multiply that by x minus x naught and that we return that. So this is our approximation. So again, in, if we take our uh, function from before um, at the value, uh, it has a zero at uh, a value of x equal to one. So if L evaluated at one for this function, uh, in if we use x naught equal to one as well, then this difference is zero and we're left with f of x naught. So that should return the true value. And then if we start to move x away here, um, we start to get something that's incorrect. So that's as we would expect. We'll plot it in a second. Then we have our quadratic function and it's the same thing. We compute first the function, its derivative and its double derivative at the point x naught. So that's f0, g0, and h0. And then our approximating function is f0 plus g0 times, and x is where we are evaluating the function. x0 is just a scalar, it's just a number, plus a half times double derivative times the difference squared. <clears throat> and let's plot them together. I'm going to write a function here to do the plotting for me, which takes any function f and the point at which we want to form these two approximations and the grid over which to plot them. And then we plot the grid and f evaluated at the grid and then this linear approximation evaluated on the grid taking a, a, this x0 value and then the quadratic approximation and finally we also show the, um, the, the reference point. All right. So let's do it. And here we can see our true function is in blue here, same as it was up here. We can even squeeze the y limits um, to be a little bit closer to what we saw previously. So we can see this is the same and we can see that our approximating second order polynomial is right smack on top of the true function. And that makes perfect sense because the true function is itself a quadratic function. And we can see our uh, orange line here, that's the linear approximation. And if we move this uh, point around, we can see that the gradients are changing. All right. <clears throat> Great. So, so that's how the quadratic approximation works for a function that is itself quadratic. So that is a little bit cheating. So let's move on to a more advanced function here, which is a combination of one over x and the exponential function evaluated at x. So this is a highly non-quadratic function. And here we see the same exact things as above. We have our linear approximation around the function. The blue, of course, is the true function. As you can see, when we get close to zero, um, then the term one over x is dominating. And as we move away and up here, the term exponential value of x is dominating. 